In this presentation, we're going to look at the achievements of Mohammed Kanta or Kota Kanta. Kota Kanta was a, a strong warrior and uh, was a founding leader of KB Kingdom. And KB Kingdom happened to be one of the kingdoms in South Zealand. A very strong kingdom that was very influential. The kingdom rose to the highest point during the reign of Kota Kanta. Prior to the influence of, of, of KB Kingdom, the kingdom was one of the tributary states of Songhai Empire. The kingdom was conquered and controlled by Songhai Empire for a period of time. Within this period of time, Kota Kanta developed himself as a strong leader, after which he started working for the freedom or independence of Kebi Kingdom. But before this, he was said to have accompanied the Emperor of Songhai, precisely by the name Muhammad Askia, to an expedition in or against the Agadis. He accompanied the Emperor of Songhai, Muhammad Askia, in, in his expedition or his fight against the Agadis. In that fight, with the help of uh, Kota Kanta, Mohammed Askia defeated the Agadis. Upon return from that expedition, Kota Kanta severed his relationship with Mohammed Askia and started working towards the independence of Kebi Kingdom. So in this presentation, let's look at his achievements or the achievements of Kota Kanta or Mohammed Kanta. One was that Kota Kanta fought and secured the independence of Kebi state. That a small Kebi under Kota Kanta could com confront and actually defeat all conquering and strong Songhai Empire was a proof that Kota Kanta was a strong warrior, a strong leader, and an, an, an organized one who ended up uh, creating and organizing uh, the Kebi Kingdom. The next achievement was that he established himself as the undisputed leader of Kebi Kingdom and proclaimed himself the Kanta of Kebi. Subsequently, rulers of Kebi had adopted the name as the official title of the kingdom of KB State. The next achievement was that he seized the opportunity of his defeat of Songhai to attempt a conquest of the whole of Hausa land. He conquered and obtained tribute from many Hausa lands, including Agades of Air, er, Bonu, Taura, Gubai, Kanu, Kastina, Nupe, and Zaria. In fact, he nearly built an empire in, in Hausa land, but could have easily compared, that could have been easily be compared to uh, the, the empire of Songhai. The next thing was that he built a strong fortress at Gungu on the Agungu Sokoto Road. This step became necessary so that the army garrison kept there could check the invaders or invaders against his kingdom. The next achievement of Kota Kanta was that he built a renowned city. He was a renowned city planner and builder. Apart from developing Surame as his beautiful capital and also his surrounding, he created a strong stone wall 
to protect his territory. He built the magnificent city of Gungu and Leka, later served as the Hode resort of the royal family. The city of Gungu served as a Hode resort for the royal family. The next achievement was that as an able administrator, Kanta believed that geographic impediments would not prevent him from reaching his subjects at any time. Thus, to enable him to tour the marshy areas of his empire, which proved impassable during the rainy season, he built Kenu, covered with sheets of copper. Traditions claim that it took 50 people to paddle the canoe on the river Sokoto. Kutakanta died in 1554 on the battlefield through the, the poison arrow of Kasina rebels who were fighting to free their country from Kebi, Kebi's domination. He died a brave soldier, a brave soldier after he had gallantly defended Surame against Bonu invaders and actually pursued the retreating Bonu soldiers far away from his kingdom. The successors of Kutakanta were not strong enough to defend the empire against intruders, nor were they able to effectively suppress rebellious activities from Bunu, Zaria, these rebellious activities grew powerful and attacked Kebi frequently to collect tributes. Kanta Tomo, the ruling king, was forced by these problems to move the country capital from Surame to Benin Kebi in about 1715. Later in the century, however, Kebi declined consider considerably and became a tributary state to go by. It finally fell to the Fulani jihadists in 1805. Through the Kebi citizens, though the Kebi citizens managed later to reorganize themselves and settled at Agungu. So with the diminishing and the death of a strong warrior, Kota Kanta, the leaders that took after him could not defend the kingdom and could not sustain his achievements. This made, led to the decline and subsequent collapse of the Kingdom. At the time, the Kebi kingdom lost its influence, lost her powers to go by. That was when go by took over almost all parts of Hausa land as a dominant, king, a dominant kingdom, which later resulted in the uh, uh, jihad, jihad of Danfodio, or, or of Osman Danfodio, which generally culminated to the creation of the Sokoto Caliphate, which Kebi later became an emirate under the Sokoto Caliphate. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so that whenever we drop a new video, you'll be notified easily. Thank you for watching this episode on this history of uh, the Kingdom of Benin, of, 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 of uh, Kebis, and also the achievements of Mohammed Kanta or Kota Kanta. Thank you.